Foundation for OBJ Regional. It's the traditional way of growing food, seeds, earth, sun, water, but it's increasingly jeopardized by climate change, virus spread, land shortages. Now there's a futuristic option that may help. Sumi Shan and her family of innovative entrepreneurs have brought their experiences from halfway around the world to Kingston. Their promising approach to food production may soon see us eating more of this without this or that. It's a pleasure to, to be on um, and, and speak with you, Mark. So Dunya Habitats is a um, responsible mission-based agri-tech startup um, here based in Ontario. Uh, and we're looking to deliver a commercial grade year-round um, uh, modular uh, climate controlled hydroponic farming solutions. Um, what we want to do is to, to help um, farmers and growers um, wherever they're suited, um, the ability to be able to grow in any, in any climate irrespective of it um, and in any conditions. Um, so what we have is a uh, a tiny farm, um, which is a scalable modular um, unit that will allow you to grow um, year round. Where is it? Uh, it's an experimental farm? We're an early stage startup at the moment. Um, we're working out of Kingston. Uh, we've been um, we've been fortunate to be able to um, be part of the Queen's University's um, accelerator program, as well as partner with the Kingston Economic Development Office and their Frontenac CFDC. So um, that's been a, an amazing experience for us. And uh, we're hopefully um, we'll be deploying shortly uh, on a, a farmer's um, a farmer's field who's looking to do um, to increase his crop production when it comes to leafy greens. Now, Sumi, you had uh, you had a very interesting description of what it is you're you're, you're building here. You're, you're hoping to um, uh, use as a new uh, way of growing things. Uh, basically, in simpler terms, what what are we talking about? Yeah, uh, so in, in simple terms, it's a, it's a miniature greenhouse that's been optimized to allow you to be able to, to grow um, uh, in any climate. So whether you're in, you know, in freezing condition in Nunavut or in drought prone areas in sub-Saharan Africa, you know, you have the ability to grow certain um, fruits and vegetables year round, uh, you know, within a, a four week cycle. So hydroponics, uh, using water to grow um, is uh, is a proven uh, proven method. It's not something that we invented. We've just helped optimize it, um, and uh, the ability is to be a, able to scale at you go right. So, as a farmer, as a grower, if you want to start you um, uh, growing hydroponic uh, hydroponically, um, our units allows you to to start off small, and then and then you can add multiple units as you want to grow your footprint. So what sorts of vegetables can you grow using this method? Um, so hydroponically, you can grow almost uh, up to like 200 different variety of produce. Ours is a, um, uh, our current units are vertical, um, vertical farming, so vertical towers. In those, um, you can do uh, leafy green vegetables, uh, you know, such as lettuce, spinach, um, kale and such you can do um strawberries you can do uh cherry tomatoes and small onions um chilies uh, herbs you know microgreens um so there's quite a bit of variety that you can still grow within these units as well and does it does it do anything to advance the cycle of growing things it is a, is it an equal growing period or a shorter growing period how does that work mm -hmm. Um, so with that, with our units and in in in, um, in most hydroponics, um, you actually quicken the the harvest cycle. So, um, you know, for lettuce, you can grow up to about eight hundred to a thousand pounds of lettuce within our units uh, every four weeks. Uh, so that's uh, you know that's 12, 12 uh, harvests uh, versus you know maybe you know eight or or how however many that you you know you do you would do normally. Um, but so through our units, you'd at least have like at least a minimum of, of 12 harvests, right? If in one year. Well, how big can it get? Are we talking acreage here or is that going too far? I mean, you could do uh, an acreage if you want. <laughs> it's totally doable. But, you know, um, we generally, the folks that we've been speaking to, uh, you know, they range from uh, like to do like one unit or a five unit cluster or a, a seven unit cluster um, to start off with. 
Well, you mentioned your brother. There's a very interesting uh, sort of backstory to all of this. Tell me about the, pardon, pardon the pun, the family <laughs> roots. Tell me about the family roots uh, behind this project. Um, yeah, so um, so Sajivan and I, um, we come from a smallholder farming family from Sri Lanka. Um, we, of course, uh, uh, left Sri Lanka over 30 years ago due to the war. Our father came as a refugee here. Um, he was an agricultural officer there um, prior to leaving, um, coming from a farming family. Our grandfather was a farmer um, and he had actually uh, migrated. Um, well, I wouldn't say migrated, it was take decided to take our mom back um, as they retired. Um, she was a dementia patient. So, um, you know, he wanted to spend a, the, her last couple of years there. Um, and while he was there, he was also looking at, you know, supporting um, sustainable farming practices to, to, to teach the summer sort of the youth there that have forgotten or haven't had the sort of the um, the ability to learn um, some farming practices and uh, uh, new methods. So, he started a greenhouse pro, um, uh, project, but uh, he was dealing with droughts and pests. And at the same time, um, Sujivan was doing a, a pitch competition here with the Halt Price and Clinton Foundation, looking at how do you optimize, you know, uh, produce for refugee camps in the Middle East. So what he decided to do was a uh, an optimized greenhouse project that would allow us to grow whether it's in you know minus 40 degrees or a plus 50 degrees condition where you don't have to worry about pests, you don't have to uh, to deal with drought um, and such. So that's kind of where the, the genesis of everything started. So you took the idea, improved it, embellished it, and uh, here you are in Canada uh, about to launch it. Mm -hmm. um, so far, uh, what is what do you see as the potential? Who Who is interested and where in Canada? Um, yes, yeah, so um, we're starting off um, with the sort of the, the farming community. We wanted to ensure that it's tested and proven by the, the individuals who actually grow our foods. Um, so we're working with um, a Patchwork Gardens in, um, in, in Kingston. Um, they're uh, testing our units. We've got a number of different farmers um, out in the Atlantic region um, that are also looking at it, um, and as well as in Alberta that are uh, are considering it as well, which is great because it allows us to test it out in various different conditions. Um, and we, of course, we, we want to ensure that, you know, the, the farming community um, is happy with it, you know, coming from a farming background uh, ourselves. Um, and and the, the opportunity to, um, to actually, you know, as we grow um, to to cater to other sort of um, to growers or communities, whether they're you know um, in cities or a, or like rural initiatives, whether we are also looking at you know NGO NGOs that are um, working on food security programs that are supporting food banks and such. So, uh, which aligns with our overall sort of uh, vision and mission of, of the Dunya project, which is to to ensure that we're putting. Um, production into the hands that into the hands of people that need it most so we're, we're able to provide locally grown uh, fresh produce um, that's affordable and accessible to everybody uh, silly me but but could these uh, units go on a rooftop it can um it can go on rooftops it can go in parking lots it can go on the field it, it's it's versatile enough that um you know wherever you think you might need it i'm sure we can put it <laughs> we know uh, hydroponics have been around for a while, and so what makes what makes your plan different? Um, so yes, hydroponics has definitely been around for a while. Um, you know, there's there's some folks that do like sort of indoor systems that you can put in your homes, um, and then there's you know the the larger guys uh, like Plenty um, that egg in California that do the sort of the factory size models, you know. Um, Mid-size wise, you know, you're looking at freight farms or grocers, which do the shipping container units. We're just a little below them. What we want to be able to provide is that um, for, for growers, whether um, they're in rural or, or in urban settings, um, they can start off small and as they get comfortable with the technology, comfortable growing using hydroponics, they can kind of scale at their own pace. So the idea, I, I guess, is to, uh, you're gonna be growing all of these leafy greens 
to keep some for yourself, I suppose, to, to, to market the rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So um, what we looked at it, you know, I think um, you're looking at a maybe an annual cost of operating maybe two to three thousand um, dollars per unit. Um, when we looked at Kingston prices, um, I think you could technically based on, you know, at what price you sell your your produce, um, you know, you can make uh, back almost twenty two to thirty five thousand dollars. Um, dollars in revenue. Um, so, you know, the unit kind of pays for itself eventually. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to be able to, to grow uh, for your own needs, as well as to, to sell back to the market as well. Um, as, as I take it, new entrepreneurs, um, what, sort of, what sort of a process has it been uh, getting this far? You're, you've got the Kingston connection. Have you been getting a lot of support uh, what advice do you have for other entrepreneurs? Um, so it's definitely been a grind. Yeah. <laughs> I won't, I, I won't sugarcoat that. Um, uh, we, we, self-funded it originally we both quit our sort of our day job to 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 take on this project um because we believed in it we think there's definitely an opportunity for us to to help communities as well as to to support what they need um so we had self-funded it for a bit um our advisors have been um amazing we have a great crop of advisors who have also not only given us their time but have also invested in us um, we are looking to to raise a, a bridge fund to kind of ne- get us over the next hump of uh, you know development process, but um, we've been fortunate enough to be able to be part of a number of different accelerators. So um, we were originally um, part of in in Toronto the Center for Social Innovations um, or uh, Climate Ventures Program and then Earth Tech Program. Uh, which is, you know, uh, we had some fabulous EIRs that have like advised us there um, in Kingston, of course, as I mentioned, the the you know, Queen's University uh, launch labs in um, in Kingston, as well as uh, both uh, the Kingston Economic Development Office and the um, the Frontenac CFDC. They've all they've been amazing. They've been connecting us to folks at the Ministry of um, Agriculture. Um, to potential clients, advisors, growers. So uh, I think for the advice, I guess, for entrepreneurs is to kind of leverage the networks that are out there. We do have a great ecosystem um, and a number of different supports. So um, we've been very fortunate enough to be able to kind of like uh, count on them to help us. What we want to provide is a holistic sort of um a solution. So it's not just um, teaching how uh, farmers how to farm, but um, we are also building a marketplace system within the system that would allow us allow our farmers to connect direct into um, to potential distributors and, and such so they can sell their produce as well. Um, how much family pride is invested here? Oh, quite a bit. Our, our, as I meant, I think we were joking earlier, our, our dad says, you know, it's kind of funny that we've kind of come back to our roots and, and back to agriculture. And he jokes that, that he's like, oh, what, you know, what are you doing? Um, but I, I know he's, he's proud of us. Um, you know, it's a lot of pride for us because um, we definitely want to make it work. We're, we're definitely invested in it. I think at the end of the day, if we, if we're able to save, we, you know, we've help feed a million people or, you know, help smallholder farmers, um, you know, support our local ecosystem, that would be great because um, we know like over 800 million people are living um, with food insecurity across the globe and, and being able to support uh, smallholder farmers, especially um, uh, in, in strengthening their local food system, actually definitely alleviates some of the food insecurity issues that we have to, we're dealing with, right? And with COVID, and that has definitely heightened it with, you know, border issues and everything else. We want to ensure that we're providing a solution that's uh, that's holistic. Very interesting. And best of luck on your project, Sumi. I could talk Thank about you. this all day, <laughs> but I have to get back out to the garden. There's lots of produce still waiting for me out there. Uh, so I'm going to head back out and we expect to hear more from you on your fantastic project. Uh, and as I said, uh, all the best. I hope it works out for you. 
thank you, Mark, and I appreciate the opportunity to to talk with you. And uh, and if anybody is interested in learning more about us, um, you know, visit us at uh, dunyadhabitats.com.